What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to regenerate our people. People who are kind, people who are cruel, but that's life. You can be bigger than about the I'm fine with that. Good evening, thank you for joining us on Talk About. Tonight we are looking at animal cruelty on the rise. Um, there is reason for concern from some of the statistics that we have. AVA cases rose by a fifth last year, cases of abuse. The SPCA registered a 5% increase this year. They have now 1,017 reports from July 2011 to June last year. The AVA attributes part of the problems to noise and smell nuisances by the animals. Now, Acre receives 300 calls a month, and the House Rabbit Society of Singapore has seen a 20% rise in neglect cases in 2012. And the animal abuse reports made by the Agency for Animal Welfare has gone up by about two a month to about seven a month. Now, we need to ask why is this so? In the studio, I have um, our guest, Phyllis Tan, from the Cat Welfare Society, she's a volunteer. Louis Ng from ACRES, the Animal Concerns Research and Education Society. Dr. Nick Wu, a vet from Companion Animal Agency. On my left is Mr. Ricky Yo from Actions for Singapore Dogs. Chong Mei Yi from Save Our Street Dogs. And Eunice Ma, who is a nurse, and is, as well as the Chief Advocate for the Agency for Animal Welfare in Singapore. Now, I'm going to let them say a little bit about themselves, starting with Phyllis. Um, hi, I'm Phyllis from Cat Welfare. Uh, basically, we are a non-profit group that um, advocates sterilization for stray cats. And we also hope to work towards a more harmonious community uh, with the public at large and also working together with the government authorities um, when cats issues are involved. Louis? I'm Louis from Acres. We are a local charity founded in 2001, so we're about 12 years old, um, with a main vision of a world where animals are treated with compassion and respect. I think we have our own niche in that we focus mainly on wildlife issues. So we run a wildlife rescue centre here in Singapore to rescue basically any wildlife other than dogs and cats. We run another rescue centre in Laos as well, similar function for wildlife rescue cases. Okay. And of course we campaign on industrialised animal cruelty issues. All right. well, I'm Dr Nick, I'm, I'm a vet from Companion Animal Surgery. Um, I've been working there for about four years. I'm currently a practice manager at that place. So uh, we are 24 hour practice, so we see a lot of cases uh, hit by cars, you know, so uh, other cases and referrals as well, so I'm just here to Okay, my point of view. we've got many questions for you. Yeah. Mr. Ricky Yeo is president of the Action for Singapore Dogs. Yes. Quite an old society, right? Um, well, we've been around since 2000. Okay. And our focus has always been on the stray and abandoned dogs. Um, and over the years, of course, uh, it was difficult initially, but I think along the years we do see progress. A bit a bit slow, but I think we're getting there. And, and even up to now, there's still a lot to be done for the street population and for animal welfare at large. Okay, and we have Chong Mei. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm the Prio Officer. Basically, it's Public Relations, Education and Outreach Officer. So, um, it's a new title in a way that uh, I'm going into schools to educate our younger generation on animal welfare. And um, yeah, yeah, that's a very important initiative we'll it, talk about later. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that I have a few students who uh, are really into it with me. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. And we have Nurse Na. I'm Eunice Na, um, with Agency for Animal Welfare. Uh, this group emerged out of the 2010 rescue of uh, uh, 75 dogs that were in Pasir Ris Dog Mills. Three groups emerged out of that, we were one of them. We uh, set out to transform communities for pet welfare through advocacy, uh, mediation for pet-related disputes, and we're doing that through referrals at the moment, through HDB, um, AVA, as well as uh, uh, MPs uh, who receive complaints uh, during Meet the People session. Uh, that is our core work uh, in engaging the community. And uh, part of the other side of what we do is engaging the government as well for uh, policy change. Are you governmental? Uh, we are non-governmental. 
we are also non-profit, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we focus on community as well as governmental engagement. Okay. We are talking about abuse of animals and it was a very dramatic rescue. Tell us about it. Um, what happened was uh, this breeder went bust and uh, he was about to sell his entire stock of uh, 75 dogs. So Derek, who was the leader of that rescue at that time, gathered volunteers from all over to uh, save these dogs from possible culling and possible abandonment and chucking. So we came into that uh, not knowing what we were into. Who is we? What made you people come together? All of us love dogs and all of us had, have were our own Were you friends pets. or? No, strangers who became friends. And you heard about this case? Yes, we did. There was a viral SMS that went around okay. uh, asking for help, uh, asking for adopters, uh, asking for various types of assistance okay. uh, because it was a massive uh, rescue job. And uh, the condition of the animals were in a terrible state. How long were they in neglect? Oh, uh, would have been years. The oldest dog rescued was 12 years old. Not sold? Not sold. This dog was bred yeah, every yeah. six months, every cycle. Most of them were covered with ticks and they were emaciated. According to the worker who uh, intimated quietly, told us that these dogs were only fed once every three days. And a pen of about 10 dogs would have to share one bowl of porridge, not even dog food. As and when they, the workers uh, felt like it, they would give them water. If not, then they would uh, have to feed off their uh, excrements. Okay. We know that the abuse is on the increase. Um, is the abuse on the increase because of the number of reportings, because people are now more aware of the situation? Or is it because abuse is on the increase? I think it's a bit of both, you know. Um... Currently, at this point in time, I, 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 like based on all the things that you've said, you know, there, there is a, a huge number of reports. Uh, there's a very, very large increase, and it's because um, there's many um, more pet owners now, people buying on impulse, um, uh, more people adopting dogs without knowing that they, what it, what it entails and what it involves, and also uh, due to stress levels in, in living in Singapore. I think it happens everywhere else in the world, yes, but I think it's especially true in, in Singapore where uh, the pace is quite fast. So they, they need sometimes when they're really, really stressed, they need somewhere to vent the anger. And you, you, can't, you, you, you can't take away the, the possibility of um, true, yes, people are more aware of um, the internet, um, the AVA is trying to do more about, um, um, about the, 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 the chain of reporting and making it more easy for everyone to, to contact EVA for, for these. So I think to say that abuse is really coming, um, increasing, uh, might be confounded by the fact that, you know, it is um, more people are reporting. So I can't say. More people are reporting and also we're becoming more affluent. So people want to own pets. Is it, is it, is owning a pet a status symbol? Probably is. Yes. Uh, now some go to the SPCA to get their pets. See, there's always the adoption part of it and there's the commercial part of it. Yeah. Right? I think the commercial part of it is where a lot of the abuse cases happen. Essentially, the pet shop wants to, you know, sell the puppy as fast as possible, the pet as fast as possible. So they always paint a very rosy picture. I'm a dog trainer by trade. So a lot of times my clients who, employ, uh, who hire me or engage me, They'll tell, they'll tell me that the pet shop will tell them it's really easy to train a dog. Just pump him in a little cage, which they'll sell you, of course, just for a week. And after that, everything will be fine and rosy. So they don't even interview the owner to see no. whether they, no. they can take care of no. pets? No, which is no. precisely why we're pushing for um, legislation to screen uh, pet buyers. Because okay. if you don't yeah. screen, and right. they, they just go to any family. And without knowing what they are getting themselves into, they get into the frustration of having to deal with an animal they do not understand. The animal does not understand them. There's a clash. And what happens is they abuse the animal. They throw it out into the streets, hoping that the animal will be run over so that it will not trace or back to them. Or picked up by somebody. Perhaps. Perhaps too. Perhaps uh, picked up by somebody. Uh, every year at Chinese New Year, we have dogs or cats or hamsters in plastic bags next to bins because they go out with the trash. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. And uh, it's it's. It's been on the increase. And if it's a rabbit year, then you have more rabbits, and yeah. <laughs> and then at uh, say a couple of months uh, when they start reproducing like crazy, then you see rabbits on the void decks and pe okay. people putting uh, rabbits in the sun, hoping that uh, somebody else would take care of it. Okay, but we're actually talking of a very broad scale. On the one hand, you say that neglect is a form of abuse. Yes. But there are some horrendous cases of abuse which. Uh, perhaps I'd like to go through. There was this dog, this uh, um, dog called Dimples. And what the owners did was when they went to work, they taped the mouth of Dimples and mm. they taped its legs mm. and put it to the veranda until they came back. Yeah. And we really don't know how long this was going on for. And of course, there are these horrible cases of the disemboweled kittens yes. and the dismembered kittens in Chongpang. Yeah. And then we also have, I mean, even Maybe this is down your, your alley where we had the oriental uh, hide hornbill. Hornbills. The bird fell down from the nest from the mother. And this guy, instead of trying to save the bird, he grabbed the bird by the neck so that he could take photos of the bird for his, for his mobile phone. You know, um, what makes people do this sort of thing? I know you're not a psychologist, but you're a vet, so tell us. From my own opinion, I feel um, sometimes when um, owners come home from a, a really hectic schedule, they have dogs. Most of them are new pet owners. They do not have any experience with keeping animals or dogs for that matter. They come home, they have a dog running around, chewing on the um, sofa, to, um, you know, peeing and pooing everywhere. They don't know how to toilet train. They've been trying really hard looking on the internet. So what do they do? They start hitting. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm guilty of that sometimes. Oh, you know, pets or on, on my dog, on my dog. Oh, if you meet the wrong kind of dog, yeah, that's so, where the dog will retaliate. Yeah, that's yeah. so what yeah. I get called in a lot for dogs that have turned aggressive. Why? Because you're a trainer. I'm that's a dog right, trainer okay. by trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I get a lot of these kind of cases where uh, it's like a child over a prolonged period <laughs> of abuse. The child turns aggressive. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. And that's exactly what's happening. So. It's, it then becomes an owner versus a dog kind of a, a battle mm. and that's where it goes into a really bad state of abuse. Where and the dog can't help himself. It can't. And I suppose in this case the owner also apparently can't help himself. Well, yeah. Because a lot of the issues that we just talked about is really because of impulse buying. So our mindset is really that we should get a dog but very few people read into it. Go to the website and find out what exactly the commitment is. You go to a pet shop like Ricky is saying the guy will try his very best to sell you the dog. You go back and then you realise, my God, it's right? 15, mm. yeah. 15, 20 years yeah. commitment and I'm not used to that. Yeah. And we don't realise that that's a monster in anything. us. <laughs> but I, I disagree that um, it's, it's uncontrollable behaviour because for us humans, everything is a choice. You have a choice to ill-treat someone, you have a choice to not ill-treat that person or that dog. So... For humans, it is a choice. And um, it's only because you lose control, right? Someone abusing a dog because he or she can, it's, it's a matter of a power play. And uh, Dr. Nick talked about the stresses of life. And perhaps it's true, uh, we have a very stressful life in Singapore, perhaps because we have that feeling of a loss of control. And when we go home, we are the masters of our homes. And therefore, we can do whatever we want to behind closed doors. But isn't pet ownership also meant to be a form of therapy where you rel the person is relaxed when they have a pet? Only if you have a pet for the right reasons for companionship. If you have a pet because I'm a boss, I've reached the status, I've got a Mercedes Benz, I've got a bungalow, so I need to have a husky. Exactly right about having a pet for the right reasons. If you don't have it for the right reason, it's very much like bringing up a child actually, so that there's effort and time involved. So a lot of people don't understand that. They buy it, looks very nice in a pet shop, spend a few thousand dollars on it, they expect the perfect animal who doesn't pee or poo, bite up the sofa mm. and all that stuff, no barking and all that. And when all this happens, they don't want to deal with it. So that's where they get angry, they get frustrated, they take it out on the dog. Mm. It's all because of impulse buying, it's all because there is no you know, synchronization of what it means to have a pet 
The first is what? They were told. Okay, we're talking about dogs, and I can imagine dogs being prestige, examples of, of they have arrived somewhere in society. But the most prevalent cases of abuse that the SPCA found was with the smaller animals, mm -hmm. such as hamsters. Um, and in fact, uh, according to the figures, in 2010, there were 565 hamsters dumped, like in the case you said, beside the dustbin and all that. So that's not prestige buying. No. Uh, yes, it is also because I'm a parent, I can afford it, I can buy it for my child. Uh, but they don't realize that it requires care and it requires a routine, constant care. You cannot go on vacation and leave the hamster behind, unfed, uncared for.